Good morning. We're going to worship together today, and I'd ask you to stand up as we sing God of Our Fathers. But before you do, I wanted to tell you we are so glad to have Vera Dawson at the organ today. Vera, it's gr great to see you back there. Appreciate her being here. Let's stand as we sing together. mission efforts of the church, of many churches throughout the year, is Vacation Bible School. That's where you have the most unchurched folks, you, where the church comes in contact with, with all year long. So we need lots of helpers with that. But while we're doing this survey, we thought we would go ahead and bring in uh, uh, a couple other ministries, The Zone and We Worship. Just so if, you, if you're here and you don't have a, an, a regular ministry that you're a part of, and you have a, if you like children, I want you to consider being a part of those two ministries. The zone is something where you, you can serve once a month, twice a month. The we worship is once every seven weeks. So that's not too bad. And so if you're a disciple, uh, whether it's the children's ministry, nursery, youth ministry, discipleship, you should be trying to find some place to plug in to ministry. As you love God, uh, that will overflow in your love for your neighbor and in the church. Uh, these are just a few ways you can show love for your neighbor and your brothers and sisters in Christ. So if you'd find that survey at some point during the service, and maybe take a moment after the service is over, uh, you can bring it to me. Or there's a box at the Welcome Center. You can just drop in those surveys and let us know how you are available to serve or let us know where you are interested in serving. I'm out of breath. <laughs> uh, I had to make a box out there for the surveys to go into. I didn't think about that until about 1025. Uh, so that's why <laughs> I'm out of breath. But it's a pr pretty colorful 8 by 11 thing right there, so you should appreciate that. Uh, so drop those surveys there get, or give them to me. Or, I mean, you could lay them on the Lord's Supper table up here, and, and we will we'll find them. So, so that would be great. Anyway, that's my, my announcement. Uh, I want you... Uh, to encourage you to stand in just a moment and greet one another in the name of the Lord. And if you see some faces that are unfamiliar, uh, make your way to them and, and let them know you're happy that they're here. Please stand and greet one another.
I'd like for us to remain standing as we continue to honor God, but also celebrate the freedom that we have and that we enjoy here as Americans. Our next hymn is number 799, if you need or would like to look at it. The words will also be on the screen. We're going to sing the first stanza, then we're going to read together the third stanza, and then we'll sing again on the last. America the Beautiful. personnel. Myself, I've never served in the Army, but my dad did for 23 years, so I was an Army brat, and um, I'll never forget that and appreciate being that. But anyway, we want to honor today those who uh, um, have served or are currently serving in one of our branches of the military. And we're going to start first with the National Guard. Do we have any National Guard members? Your former or current National Guard? We have a few. Great. Thank you. The Army. The Army. All right. Thank you. The Navy. No, we have some, yes. The Air Force. The Marines. Anyone from the Marine Corps? Have one? Two? Yes. And last but not least, the U.S. Coast Guard. Any Coast Guard, former or current? Well, one thing that we also want to do today, um, my brother-in-law is currently serving in Afghanistan. He is a chaplain in Afghanistan. I know many of you have family members who are currently serving in the military, um, either here in America or overseas, some in um, combative areas, some um, here in the States. But if you have a member of your family who is currently serving in the military, would you stand at this time? Let's honor them with our applause as well. 
Thank you. You may be seated. As we recognize current and former military personnel in our church body, I counted no less than 35 of you who stood. And we are so appreciative of you, of not only standing this morning, but for years ago, agreeing to stand for the freedoms of our country and giving your time to fight for our freedoms. This morning, we are especially privileged to have with us uh, Chaplain Colonel Byron Simmons is coming to share our message a little later in the service. Uh, Chaplain Simmons is a Southern Baptist chaplain assigned to the installation uh, as the installation chaplain, chaplain at Fort Knox. He was born in Owensboro, Kentucky, and from 1975 to 85, he served as an associate pastor and pastor of three different Southern Baptist churches in Russellville, Kentucky, Northern Kentucky, and Aurora, Illinois, prior to coming on active duty as an Army chaplain. He earned degrees uh, from Western Kentucky University, the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Eastern Theological Seminary in Philadelphia, and the United States Army War College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Chaplain Simmons has served in the position of battalion chaplain, brigade chaplain, senior, senior brigade chaplain, deputy command chaplain, installation chaplain, and director of the, uh, of the Capability Integration Directorate for the U.S. Army Chaplain Corps. His military service has taken him on two tours to Korea, two tours to Belgium, as well as Iraq. And stateside, he has served in New Jersey, Louisiana, Texas, California, South Carolina, Kansas, Virginia, Arizona, and Kentucky. Perhaps it would be easier for me to list you the places he has not served. <laughs> we welcome Chaplain Simmons this morning as he comes uh, to share with us a bit of his heart for our military service and how God is using him as a chaplain to share the gospel with our men and women fighting for our freedoms. This morning as we go into a time of prayer, we pray for him as he comes. We also pray for those of you who stood for your family members who are currently serving overseas or domestically, we pray for them this morning. Also in your uh, bulletins, you'll have a card. You can pull that card out. This card is the profile of one of our Southern Baptist endorsed chaplains currently serving in our armed forces. Just as we pray for Colonel Simmons this morning, we also pray for them as they seek to carry the gospel message to our fighting men and women. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we come before you this morning, Lord, with a deep love for you, a deep love for our country. And Lord, we are so thankful for the way you have moved in the history of this land. Lord, that this morning we are able to stand here on Main Street of Versailles and freely proclaim the message of the Bible. Lord, we recognize that many brothers and sisters around the globe do not have that privilege afforded to them who are worshiping today in secret or in the disguise of darkness. But Lord, we are so thankful for your hand uh, bringing freedom to this land. And we pray freedom for other lands that they would be free from oppression. Lord, we pray right now for the military personnel who were um, indicated by those who stood, Father. We pray that you would give them safety, give them encouragement as they are embarking and encountering their time of service. Lord, we pray for our military chaplains who this morning in installations all over the globe will be proclaiming the gospel message to men and women who have given their life to military service. We pray for them this morning, each name that's indicated on a card. And we pray for Chaplain Simmons, Lord, for his work in Fort Knox and for his work around the globe, encouraging other chaplains to carry on and be diligent in their work of the gospel. We love you, Jesus, and it's your name that we pray. Amen. Join me as we sing.
continue in worship by singing together. incredible privilege it is to be in this country, Lord. There are so many places around the world where Christians gather together in secrecy and in fear, and yet, Lord, so many of those places consider us unfortunate because in our comfort we take for granted so many things about the blessings that you give us. And that even in the midst of their difficulty, Lord, they feel the urgency of your spirit. They feel the freshness of the fire you give them even in the midst of their difficulty. And Lord, I just pray that today that we do not grow complacent and numb because of the fact that we can come and worship you freely and without persecution. Lord, help us to glimpse just a little bit of the of the urgency that those who are suffering saints uh, have and that some of that we would not only pray for their effectiveness in their, in their particular world areas where they are under literal fire um, in the service of you, but that we here would bring honor to you and honor to them by being just as full of zeal and just as full of fire, um, even in our comfort, Lord. And help us to uh, be cheerful and, and exuberant and overwhelming givers back to you now as we bring the little bit that we give back to you just as a small token for the flood 
of things that you've just poured onto us, even though we don't deserve the first of, of any of it. We pray for the words that are preached today, that they come from you and not from um, human minds and from human lips, but that the Spirit of God speaks clear and unhindered and that lives are radically changed and that we are willing to die for our cause and the main cause of all, and that is you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That was, uh, that was wonderful. God bless you. Notice how the ushers were timed just right, too. Do you notice that? That's good. I like that. As being an Army person, we like it when it's all kind of timed like that. Amen, Amen brother. Preach it. Go for it. Uh, let me say what an honor it is for me to be with you this morning. Uh, I'm the installation chaplain in Fort Knox, Kentucky. Didn't bring any gold with me, so don't ask. They don't let us uh, carry any of that out of the uh, gold vault there. Uh, but I bring greetings to you from the installation commander, Brigadier General Combs, and uh, just kind of an honor to be with you. If you have your Bibles this morning, I wish you would turn to Psalms chapter 37, verse 39. I just have a couple of verses for us. I noticed in the bulletin where it says sermon notes that the space was just a little bit, and I don't know if that was a hint or not, uh, but I'll try to hear that this morning. Psalms 37, 39, and 40 say, The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in Him. We're getting ready to enter a week where we celebrate the 4th of July, the independence of America from Great Britain, and all that has happened from that day till now in God's uh, presence and God's promise with us. There'll be a lot of fireworks, there'll be a lot of barbecue. I'm from Owensboro, Kentucky. We love our barbecue. There'll be a lot of that going on 
this week, a lot of different things. But for a soldier, and for most of you, I think, freedom is much more than that. And in some instances, I think those who are soldiers and those who fight the battles wonder sometimes if people really realize the price that is paid for freedom. Our struggling nation, less than a hundred years after she was birthed, stood at the very brink of annihilation. And President Lincoln, probably better than anyone could have except him, went down to Gettysburg Cemetery to a dedication there, which he was barely invited to, but was invited at the last moment. And he stood at the edge of that great cemetery where 7,000 people died in one battle. Twice the number of people that died fighting for Iraq died in that battle in just two days. President Lincoln said this, and I want you to hear what he says, because I think it speaks to our, our scripture today. It is for us here dedicated to this great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government by the people, for the people, and of the people shall not perish from the earth. The centurion stood at the base of the cross. And he looked up into the, into the face of Jesus and saw deity. And he proclaimed, truly, surely. This was the Son of God. That centurion was a soldier, and he understood the issues of life and death because soldiers live with issues of life and death every single day that they're in the service. The editorial a couple of weeks ago that talked about the uh, soldiers on the forward operating base being in cut-off T-shirts and wearing bandanas on their head really missed the point. Because soldiers, airmen, sailors, marines, coast guardsmen, spend much of their time just existing, just getting through the day for that moment when they'll be asked to lay down their life for our freedoms. I've been in the Army for 30 years, really almost 32 years. When I entered the Army, the USSR was the greatest enemy our nation faced. Today, the USSR is merely a footnote in history. When I came into the Army, computers were in their infancy. We still used those old things called mimeograph machines. Yeah! And on everybody's shelf was a stack that high of carbon paper. And you just put it between the sheets, and that's how you got things done. When I came into the Army, the Humvee was a prototype. First two field exercises I did in the Army, we used that little green thing they called Jeep. The year I entered the Army, Motorola introduced the first commercially practical cell phone called the Dynatac. It weighed a little over a pound and cost $3,500. Oliver North describes the recruit today as being a young man or woman that is 30, is 20 and a half years old. They're a high school graduate. They're brighter, better educated, better trained, better equipped than any other soldier in any nation on the face of the earth at any other time in the history of the world. Every day they put on an eight pound helmet made of Kevlar. They wear a 45 pound flak vest and they'll march up and down the hills of Kandahar, Afghanistan, and barely break a sweat. They've been taught chemistry, physics, ballistics, avionics, electronics, and they operate and maintain the most sophisticated equipment ever designed by the, man, by the mind of man and by the hand of man. That soldier uses his weapon like his body and uses their body as a weapon. He can take a life, he can save a life, because he's been trained that well. But my friend, listen to me. The price a soldier pays to defend our freedom 
is the same today with that new recruit as it was 30 years ago when I came into the army or over 200 years ago when this great nation was born. What is that price? It's all of their yesterdays, all of their todays, all of their tomorrows. It's all their hopes for kids and grandkids. It's their dreams for success and fame. It's their hopes for growing old, enjoying the fruits of their labor. It's every day from that day forward, now listen, times 100, times 100, times 2. That's what that person gives, so that I can enjoy freedom just for today. Wow. That's what freedom costs. Freedom is a gift, not just to us who enjoy today, but for the entire world. And it is up to us, as the young man prayed today, to continue to invest so that America will continue to be free from this day forward. For the task, President Lincoln said, is that we will continue on to in hopes that this nation will always be that beacon of hope. The soldier's hope and prayer is that if they have to give that last full measure of devotion, that it will not be in vain. But can I share something with you? In the back of the recesses of every soldier is that nagging thought that if they have to lay down their life in defense of this nation, that it might be in vain. Because the Vietnam War taught us that sometimes soldiers fight for causes all alone that America does not join with them in. And I would say to you that part of the the crisis and part of the call to a nation today as we celebrate our birth is that we unite together for the cause of freedom and unite together for the cause of liberty so that these men and these women will not have died in vain. Lieutenant Colonel John McRae was a young lieutenant colonel during the First World War back in the 1915s. Anybody here alive then? Good, nobody too old then, huh? But Colonel McRae was in a Canadian army in the Second Battle of Ypres in the Flanders area of Belgium. And they fought furiously. And it was during this battle that the enemy first used chemical weapons. And it was against this unit. And Lieutenant Colonel McRae wrote his mom in a letter during that battle, and he said, for 17 days, we have not had our clothes off. For 17 days, we have not been able even to take our boots off and air out our stinky socks. For 17 days, the rifle fire and the cannon fire has not ceased for even a minute. We look around at the carnage, the dead bodies, the people that are dying and groaning, and we have in our hearts the fear that if we don't continue on, they'll break through the line, and all that we have fought for will be for naught. It was during the latter part of that battle that Lieutenant Colonel McRae lost his best friend, a man by the name of Alex Hamer. Colonel McRae did the memorial service and the burial service himself. He went out into the fields of Flanders. He dug a grave. He placed his buddy, his friend, in the grave, put the dirt on top. And as he was doing that, he noticed all the other graves and how as soon as they would have a fresh grave, that little poppies would grow up around the grave. Colonel McRae began to grieve his friend and to wonder, is it really, really worth it? I mean, is it really worth my life for this country to be free? Really? And the next day on the back of an old ambulance looking out, trying to come to grips with his service to the world, he wrote this poem. In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. That mark mark our place. 
In the sky, the lark still bravely singing, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, fell dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. But now we lie in Flanders' fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, will you please? To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. But if you break faith with those who die, we will never sleep. Though poppies grow in Flanders' fields. My friend, the torch has been tossed to those of us who love freedom and love liberty. So how do we do that? How do we hold the torch high? How are we supposed to defend freedom? Most of us aren't in uniform. We don't know all the new techniques about fighting battles. How do we do that? I got three things that we can do as Americans and as Christians and as Southern Baptists to hold that torch high. The first one is remember who you are. Understand where you came from. We are Christians. Our life, our beliefs are founded in the book, this book. We are Americans. We are different than everyone else. Of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, 24 were lawyers and legal people. Nine were landowners and rich farmers. Eleven were merchants. There were physicians. There were preachers. There were politicians. All but two had families that they were willing to put on the line that day. Of every one of them, they knew that the penalty for their service was to be hung by the neck till dead, and yet they signed. Most of you know the biggest name on that document was John Hancock. He signed it huge, and when he was done, he says, there, his majesty will have no problem reading that even without his spectacles. Stephen Hopkins was the oldest man who signed, and we're told by historians that as he signed that document, his hand kind of trembled. And when he got done, he looked up and he said, Gentlemen, my hand trembles, but my heart does not. We need to be a people of resolute heart that says, Here we stand by God's love, God's grace. We'll be doing no other. America is good. Why? America is great. Why? Because she is good. And when America ceases to be good, she will no longer be great. Let me give you a, a fact. Are you ready? America was birthed on Christian principles, God-given principles. And it is through those principles that America will stand for years to come. We always have our detractors. Have you noticed that? We had a person drop by Fort Knox Chapel just the other day, a few weeks ago, and he sent a note all the way up to the commander. The preacher in the pulpit that day wasn't very inclusive. He wasn't very ecumenical. He talked about this, and he talked about that, and he talked about this. And the commander sent back a note and said, look, if you don't like the preaching, go somewhere else. Just go somewhere else. We need to stand firm on the Word of God. Somebody once said to Benjamin Franklin, challenged him on his, this idea of opening political sessions with prayer. Here's what Benjamin Franklin said two, over 200 years ago. He said, I've lived, sir, a long time. And the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of man. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it even possible? that an empire will rise without his aid. We have been assured, sir, said Franklin, in the sacred writings, that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. As long as God is the foundation of the principles of this nation, 
She will continue to flourish. And we need to be the ones to remind other folks, say what you will, but this nation was founded upon God and upon His principles. And there we stand. Remember where you come from. Second of all, do what is right. That sounds easy, doesn't it? Do what's right. Just do what's right. Sounds easy. But doesn't seem to be too easy for a lot of people. The prophet Micah had the same problem in his days as people kind of struggle with, you know, really what I ought to do. And you know what Micah said? You know what the prophet Micah said in, in chapter 6, verse 8? He said, God only desires three things of you. Remember what it was? Act justly. Love mercy and walk humbly with your God. Are you involved with justice? Are you doing what's right, even in the small things? Radcliffe, Kentucky is where I vote. I think the last primary was May 20th or something like that. Am I right? Well, I went down to the Little Baptist Church there to vote because I think everybody ought to vote. Now, some of you are saying, preacher, you, you, you just gone from preaching to meddling now. Well, you hear me out, I'll be done in just a second. So I went down to vote. It was a hard day, a busy day, hot day, thousand things going on. But I broke free and went down to vote. I went to do my little thing and did it with the paper because computers still kind of scare me a little bit. So I did the paper thing. And over to the side of me was an elderly man. And elderly is older than me. So he's about 80. And he was struggling with his paper. He couldn't see. Of course, you ask yourself, how did he get there? But anyway, he couldn't see. He was fumbling around with his paper and he said to the people working the polls, can you help me out? They said, we're not allowed to help you. We're not allowed to help you. So I went over and I, I helped the young man, the older man, get his ballot, fold it up. And when I looked at his ballot, I didn't do it on purpose, but when I looked at his ballot, I noticed he voted exactly opposite of me. But you know what? He was there doing the right thing. We will do the right things in the little things. God will honor us in the large things. And I'll tell you what, I grow a little bit weary of those who want so much and yet are so unwilling to do the least that's required of an American. Remember where you come from, do what is right, and last of all, Accept responsibility. Listen to this. Henry Grady was the editor of the Constitution, that uh, paper that still exists down in Atlanta. And he was known as an orator, and so he was part of one of the celebrations of the 4th of July. And he said, we started down at Hampton Roads. Hampton Roads is in Virginia. And he said, we went down there and we saw the Army and all of its might. Saw the Navy with all the ships go by, the Marines. And he said, I said to myself, wow. Therein is the greatness of this great country. He said, then we went up to D.C. He said, I saw all the different processes of government, all these dedicated men and women doing their best to make sure that the right laws were passed, that governance continued. And I said to myself, wow, therein is the greatness of government, greatness of our nation, the government, the processes. He said, at the end of the day, I... I had a friend that lived in the area, and I went to, to spend the night with him. He and, and uh, Mr. Grady grew up in Georgia together. And he said, when all the chores were done and all the different mundane things of living were done, he said, that man called his family together, and they sat around the table, and they read God's Word. He said, when they were finished reading God's Word, they prayed. Thank God for today. And ask God for the protection of the night. And he said in that moment, the images of that great army faded away. The domes of the Capitol and the processes of government faded from my memory. And I realized the greatness of America resides in her people committed to God, committed to the book, and committed to prayer. My friend, the torch has been tossed to you today to do the right thing, to remember where you come from, and to be the one that says, if no one stands, I will stand, 
And if I stand alone, still I will stand and be faithful to my God. And so it really all comes down to this, doesn't it? What in the world have you done with Jesus? Does Jesus live in your life? Does he live in your family? Is he an important part of what you do? Do you think about Jesus when you're involved in your community and in your government? What have you done with Jesus? Maybe you're here this morning and you've never said yes to the Savior who said yes to the cross. What I'm saying doesn't mean anything to you because you don't know the one that makes life and living come alive. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and as Lord, I would plead with you, before you leave, you come. You accept Him as Savior and as Lord, and He'll make a difference in your life. Thank you. God bless you for having me here. Hopefully I'll come back in another 30, 40 years. God bless you. Thank you for that challenge this morning. As, as Colonel Simmons was reflecting upon the sacrifice of so many for our freedom, it's hard not to think of a sacrifice that Christ made some 2,000 years ago. The scripture describes in this in Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Maybe this morning... You need to come to embrace the love and sacrificial death of Christ. Kevin and I will be standing up front to receive you this morning. Or maybe this morning you'd like to come and unite with a family, a fellowship, a body of Christ to say, I want to place my commitment and my membership with this faith family. Whatever the decision may be, we invite you to come. Let's stand as we sing. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you Just real quick, now that I have my breath, I want to remind you that those surveys that we put in the bulletin today are actually very, very important, and, uh, and if you would uh, take a moment even at the end of the service to fill those out and, and, and either bring them to me or put them in the newly decorated box at the Welcome Center, that would be, that would be awesome. I, I can't tell you how many people are doing multiple jobs 
uh, praying for some reinforcements, even somebody who might come and volunteer once every seven weeks in, the, in, the, in We Worship or once every month in the zone. And, and certainly we don't want to let the mission opportunity of VBS pass us by without doing whatever we possibly can to show the love of Christ to our neighbors here in Woodford County. So please remember that. And also tonight uh, we have a special guest, uh, worship leaders in, in, our, in our youth worship tonight uh, from the Point Community Church. We have a guest speaker, Spencer Harmon. Uh, we have a Mission Fuge meeting at 5 o'clock. So lots going on with youth tonight, 5 o'clock Mission Fuge meeting, 6 o'clock uh, food, and then 6.30 worship. So lots going on. And I want to remind you, if you have a, a, a rising sixth grader, they're welcome to come to anything that we're doing in the youth program. They're we're, we're encouraged to come. So, so if they haven't uh, uh, gotten acquainted with the youth program, I uh, really encourage you to consider coming out tonight. Also tonight, we're in store for a great blessing. Uh, the Changed Heart Quartet will be leading us in a time of uh, worship. Uh, Dr. Redden, uh, who spoke last week at our uh, sharing a testimony about Mexico, will be is part of that group, and I hope you'll come out 6 o'clock here in the sanctuary tonight for the Changed Heart Quartet, a great time of worship. If you are a guest here this morning, we thank you so much for being here. Uh, we have a gift that we'd love to give you. If you would visit our Welcome Center, our Connection Center, just through this door, you'll see a table there, and uh, we'd love to extend a gift to you. Kids, we also have gifts for you if this is your first time worshiping with us this morning. And kids that filled out, uh, filled out a uh, kids bulletin, um, we have some. Kevin will be out at the Welcome Center area too for you to receive your prize for filling out our kids bulletin this morning. Also, deacons, it did not get printed in the bulletin, but there is deacons meeting this Thursday. So one quick note to our group. We're privileged this morning to have the Ladans with us. If you guys want to come uh, uh, join us, Jody and Jennifer uh, moved here from Bloomfield, Kentucky uh, back in the fall and um, have been connecting with our church here, here of late. And they come this morning saying that we want to join this faith family. Uh, you may have, you've been enjoying Jennifer these past several weeks playing the drums for us, so we appreciate uh, her. And uh, Jody is one of our military uh, servicemen, uh, serving even as we speak. So we thank you so much for your uh, commitment. What we do and when folks join our church family, uh, we recite a uh, passage of scripture together that we really think identify us as a church. And then we also take a chance to quote our uh, theme, our, our uh, mission statement together. So if you agree to support them and love them and accept them as part of this church body, would you show that by the lifting of your right hand and quoting our text? We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that we may declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. And our mission statement, Purcell's Baptist Church exists to glorify God by helping people decide, devote, and demonstrate their faith. Who would like to come stand with the Ladans this morning as we have a chance to greet them as a church body? As you come, you'll notice in our family room we have pictures of new family members, new uh, recent uh, additions to our church family. The Ladans picture will be featured there soon. And so be sure to stop by there and you can put some names and faces uh, together. If you guys um, want to stand here a little dance, also I'd like to invite our Owsley County Mission team to come forward. If you're participating in the upcoming Owsley County Mission trip, if you could come stand over to my left here, we'd like to have a chance to pray for you and, and support you. This week we've got a group uh, who are going on a family mission trip to the poorest county of our state. And they're going to be doing some home repair work. They're going to be doing leading vacation Bible school, backyard Bible clubs, staying at the Immaquire Mission Center in Owsley County. And it's not just Nick. <laughs> He's a talented guy, but uh, uh, the Calvary's coming right here. Yeah. One of the things I love about this mission trip is it's a family mission trip. So families get to go together, and uh, they can stay in a room together. They can serve together. Instead of us always breaking up to send adults one place and kids another place and teenagers another place, we want to be a church that promotes family and gives people opportunities to serve together as a family Unit. Well, <laughs> well, this team will be departing right after uh, we close up our worship service, leaving uh, with our church van and heading that way. So we want to be in prayer for them as they go to uh, as they go to serve.
And we're going to close our service out in a time of prayer for, for this uh, mission team, and then Johnny will lead us in a, in a closing hymn. Father God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather together this morning. We thank you for uh, Chaplain Simmons coming to share uh, a message that you have laid on his heart, Father. Lord, I pray for this team that is going to um, minister in the eastern part of our state. God, so much poverty, so much uh, hopelessness, so much despair that they will encounter. And I pray, God, that they can encourage folks, they can give people a hope that is only available through Jesus Christ. Lord, as they serve, as they uh, work on flooring, as they work on home repair, God, I pray that they will not just be building physical homes, God, but that you would open the door for them to help people uh, have spiritual homes, God, in heaven. And Lord, I pray you give them a chance to share the gospel, God, this week with those homeowners and people that they interact with. I pray for them as they encounter um, uh, children and, and adults through the backyard Bible clubs. Lord, I pray that you would bring children to be part of those activities, and God, that they would have a chance, God, not just to have fun, but a chance to share uh, the message of Christ with them. So God, we lay this team out as our missionaries to Eastern Kentucky. And Lord, I pray that over this week that you would give them a chance to minister in a great and powerful way. We love you, Jesus, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Would you stand as we sing? God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from the the mountains from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with all